man, I swear summer's never going to go away. It's hot in the shop. And so I start dragging on some of these projects. I need to get a California license plate guitar out to Bristol, England this week, which means I need to get to work. And um, remember the last episode where I showed you how to space the strings? Hey, thanks for your comments and everything. Metric Hater, I'm sorry, I can't control what they say about you, dude. But anyway, this episode is on that same guitar. We're going to talk about how to get the strings low enough to the fingerboard where you can adjust it up or down with the floating bridge and it's not so high that people can't fret and all they can do is play with the side. Now don't forget, give me a like, subscribe, and you'll be noticed as soon as my videos come out. So let's quit playing around here and get this guitar done and get it out. So let's hit the band. Okay guys, let's take a look at my setup here before we get going. In the background, that is a band called 20 Miles. It's a Bauer Brothers out of John Spencer Blues Explosion. You'll hear that in the background. I'm going to give you a link below. Most of these songs are off of a uh, record called 20 Miles by 20 Miles. Kind of like that album or that song Talk Talk by Talk Talk on Talk Talk. Anyway, for you 80s freaks there. There you go. That's all you're going to get from me. Anyway, let's take a look at what we got here. We got a giddy up go on this. I mean, this has been on my bench for months. I got to get to England. We don't need to fix our hair and put Aquanet in it. We just need to get this done right here. But let's take a look at what I got. I got 50 Cent, my guest star. Today is 50 Cent. And then I got a bridge. I'm going to show you. Um, uh, it's going to come in for a visual aid. Um, we're going to be setting the string height here, and I'm going to show you a couple tricks. You've seen this all before. Um, check it out. I, I'm going to put some relic wood in this again. Fred McDowell, Alan Wilson, and Rube Lacey. Um, I want to show you a little trick, pretty cheap. I've got these frat markers. They would not look good against that wood. So I just take a magic marker or a, sp uh, a Sharpie. Now let me pull this over here and see what we can do. You see that dot right there? It's not very big. So I'm just going to very scientifically do this and make it bigger. And then that way when I drill the hole for the white fret marker, it will stand out like a, well, like a, a millimeter in a yardstick. You can see that I'm so low on Camacho boxes that I use them for gu guitar stands. You like that? Well, I don't want to show you the rest of them because then you'll be sinful and want to covet my stuff. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Okay, I've told you numerous times. I hope you're listening to me. But you see this quarter? You see how high them strings are? Let's, let's zip, zip this down just a little bit so we can see. You see the distance between the string and the 12th fret right there? I've told you a bunch of times if you can put if there's more space than a quarter, you see that right there? That that's not good. Your strings are too high. And when you try to fret, you push down on this with your finger, what's going to happen is the note's not going to be right on. Your intonation isn't going to be right. And you're going to have people crying at you. Now, if you look here, there's almost, there's a little bit more than two quarters right there. Not quite three, but that's too much. So we're going to have to drop the strings down. And let me show you how to do that. Before we get into this highly technical stuff here, I want to point out to you this song in the background by 20 Miles called Welcome to This Place Called Hell. Okay, you see this? You've seen this before. It slides up and down. Look, for you metricators, I have it on the English system. Right here, you see that? It's got 64s and 164s and 3864s displayed. And on the back, you have this painful means of making it into metric system. If I would have known that this was on here, I would have never purchased this. It went right in the trash can. In fact, I think I'll take it back after I use it for another four or five years. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to hell over this cheap thing right here. It's going to be for something way bigger than that. Okay, so look. I want a quarter underneath there. You see that quarter? And there's more than a quarter. So what I did was I took this little side ruler here and put on the string and I figured out I've got to lower the string by that much for it to be a quarter there so where am I going to do that let me move this 
this is not on a dolly it's on an old something or other here looks like it used to be a chair at one time or another you see that right there we're going to take it off of there now there's two ways to do this you can either do it on a belt sander let's talk about that do not covet that saw i know all right so one way of doing this is on this belt sander you've seen this before anyway i can adjust this while it's running and move this belt this way or this way so if i adjust this and bring the belt over to here i can take the piece of my floating bridge that looks like this i can ride it right there on the belt flip it around do that and then i can take this and hold it there like that now this is a quick way to peel your fingernails back if you don't watch it but anyway it's a quick way to take a lot of material off of there and there and then you flip it around and do there once again like okay so. you remember this th this thing right here remember that gap that i got by measuring the distance from the top of the string down to the uh, quarter why didn't I go from the bottom of the string well I want this to be a little bit lower so I can adjust it up with these thumb screws right here on the bridge but anyway through the miracle of modern science somebody invented this sharpie so all I really got to do is number one have more than one hand or two hands or however many I have but anyway I'm going to take this from the top of the bridge like that you see that and I'm going to put a mark right there and I'm going to do that everywhere where I have a string like so would you please stand up and do your job anyway like so that's a little bit rough but you get the idea now the string slots have to be that deep for the action to be right now I've taken the liberty of doing that already right here my I prepared so I will take one of these and wherever I can do this from the top of the bridge I will do that I will make a mark and then I will file these down to the appropriate level now see top of the string top of the string I gain the top of the string back where I did it here and it's all gonna work out perfect it always does you know that okay so I have these files here and uh, if you've been watching the comments below, they're actually better than the videos. They get about as crazy as Grandpa Bub's two-story outhouse. It says Ma on top, and it says Pa. And when you go in there, it ain't pretty, son. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. If you were heard Gertie man and I had quite the treatise going down in the comment section about whether to use a triangular file, a flat file, or a round file. My comment was that since the strings are round, if you use a triangular file and go all the way down, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a spot. Here, let's use these scissors. Uh, those aren't scissors, dude. Anyway, don't forget we're in California. Anyway, it ends up sitting like this and you see there's a gap down there and that causes string buzz I think I've used that optic before anyway so I start this so the strings don't jump out they got a nice transition and then I go to this file thank you for your expertise Mr. Hurdy Gertie man now I have taken the liberty of loosening this string off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to file this forever until when until that's right it gets down to that mark rather than bore you uh, or hypnotize you and get you to quit smoking i'm just going to turn the camera off and get these done all four of them and i didn't do all of them i got a couple more strokes to go on this one right here there it's down to the line i dropped that down in there now i like that being down in there that far because i don't care if you're bob log the third reverend payton or all of them put together you ain't go snap that string out of there so it's about down to that line a little bit more like so now the test is when we go back to our 12th fret that string should be right touching that quarter right there oh look we got just a tad more to go why a tad more well this is at the lowest it's going to be right now and i can turn this up with thumb screw so i want to take this down so that's actually laying on that quarter then i can touch this up and adjust it and it'll be fine it's easier to go down than it is to go up i think all right look at that there we go let's take the tape off and see what happens it's a 
very skilled task here, but you see, there's a way down in there like so. You see that? Looks good. But the test is what's quarter doing? Is that quarter with them strings are laying right on the top of that quarter, which means with the string slack, I can adjust this up like so and raise this up and get them strings right where I want them and still have room to go down here. That's what we're looking for right there. Easy money. Now, let's blow these fret markers out and get this relic wood in here and say goodbye. You hear that back feed off that amp? You know that song, She's in Love With Me and I Feel Fine? You know what that means? I do. Anyway, that's how they made that song, is feedback off the amp, off the guitar. Anyway, you know this puppy, right? Too bad I don't know what to do with it. But anyway, let's see what this thing looks like. Should we turn it up a little bit? I hope them people in England are better than I am. Fred McDowell, little Alan Wilson, and a little Rube Lacey. Okay, last thing, we're going to take some Earl Lube paste and we're going to cut these prizes from the fair out. So this is around Lancaster. We'll put these on the guitar. They'll always remember that, of course. The Palmiro Junk Pile Guitar Sticker. Ain't going nowhere without that. Next time somebody says I'm insensitive, you just remind them, I got these pink scissors here. I don't want to hear that. Earl Lube man, aren't you glad I found you, son? Anyway, a little bit there like that. I better make sure that's perfectly straight. I wouldn't want to mess this up now, would I? All right, people. Um, we'll get this on here, and I'm gonna try and get this in the mail. There are husky tones out there in Bristol, England. I appreciate your patience, and guys, I will see you next time.